Hello, Bio20. This short lesson is on energy and matter exchange in the biosphere. It's really an introduction to this first chapter and the first unit in the course. And here in this picture, we're taking a look at the biosphere component. So when we talk about the biosphere, bio is referring to living organisms. So in the biosphere, that is where we would find living organisms. So you've learned about these different parts of the biosphere before the atmosphere from the surface of the earth high, high up into the sky, and we can find living organisms, not just the big things that you probably tend to think of, the birds and the bats and the insects, but smaller things as well, bacteria that you can also find up in the atmosphere. The lithosphere is referring to the earth's crust, and we can of course find living organisms on the surface of the earth's crust, but also far deep down below the surface, through drilling and drilling samples, drilling cores, they have found microscopic organisms, again bacteria, and from another kingdom called Archaea, living several kilometers below the surface of the Earth. And most of the Earth, of course, is covered by water, and that is the hydrosphere, the oceans, but also don't forget about other bodies of water, lakes, rivers, streams, and below the surface in the form of groundwater. You might recall, and you may have learned about another part as well, referred to as the cryosphere. Cryosphere, I suppose, is technically part of the hydrosphere. It is still water, but it's just water in a different state, and that is in a frozen state. So when we talk about the cryosphere, it's primarily the polar ice caps, the north and the south polar ice caps, but also think about things like the glaciers as well. So all of those are different parts of the biosphere where we can find living organisms. Just going back to the title here again, really important to uh, understand that energy is a huge topic in biology and all of sciences. And what I'm going to show you and what we're going to emphasize is that with energy, we have the flow of energy. When we talk about matter in the biosphere, what we have is the cycling of matter. And we'll see why that is the case in a couple of slides here. So a little bit of terminology, terms that uh, you would have seen before, different kinds of systems. Isolated system, open system, closed system, all of these are referring to the movement and the exchange of energy and matter. If you have an isolated system, what that means is that neither energy nor matter enters or leaves. Isolated system, energy doesn't come in, energy doesn't go out, and neither does the matter. If you have an open system, exactly the opposite. Both energy and matter are going to be entering, they are going to be leaving, they are going to be exchanged. So in biology, you have learned about ecosystems before, you've learned about the biomes, and these are very nice examples of open systems where we do have both energy and matter that are being exchanged. In a closed system, you have energy that is exchanged. Energy can enter, energy can leave but matter cannot. And the classic example of that, that of course you should remember, is the Earth. The Earth is a closed system. So the title of this slide, Energy Flow. And again, really important that you do realize that with energy, it is going from point A to point B to point C, and it doesn't cycle back to point A again. So this picture here is showing with the black arrows the movement of energy. So the energy from the sun is where Earth gets most of the energy from. It is not the only source, but it is by far the major, major source of energy that is going to be captured by and is available on the Earth. So if we take a look at this arrow here, the energy is going to enter the biosphere. It's going to, well, maybe be captured by components of the biosphere, as we will see. But in the end, what is going to happen, it is also going to be released by the biosphere. It's going to be released by the Earth, and that is going to be released in the form of heat. So it enters in the form of solar energy, which includes heat, but also various different uh, forms of light energy. But when it does leave, for the most part, really just in the form of heat energy. Completely different story when we're talking about matter. So matter is going to cycle. And that's what it's showing with these arrows here. We don't have matter that is entering the Earth. We don't have matter that is leaving. So it does need to be used and reused and recycled over and over and over again. So of that incoming solar radiation, and when we do talk about solar radiation, 
we do tend to think about, well, things like visible light and things like heat, but it is many, many other things as well. So it does include energy coming from the sun is also in the form of things like x-rays and ultraviolet radiation that we cannot see. Much of this is going to be filtered out by the atmosphere. Visible light does reach the surface of the Earth. It does reach the various different components of the biosphere. And these are some things that can happen with that incoming solar radiation. And again, primarily we're talking about here the visible light and also the infrared or the heat radiation. So it can be absorbed. So that incoming radiation coming from the sun, if we take a look at the picture here, it can be absorbed, but it can be absorbed by various different parts of the biosphere. It can be captured and absorbed by the land, by the lithosphere to warm it up, to heat it up. It can be absorbed by the water, by the oceans. If that is the case, it might be driving evaporation and in turn driving the water cycle. It can be captured by the atmosphere, warming up the molecules in the atmosphere, leading to convection currents and leading to the weather patterns and the wind patterns. If it's absorbed, that means it can be used. The opposite of absorption is reflection. If it's reflected, then generally it's not used. So it can be absorbed by these different components of the biosphere. It can also be reflected. It can be reflected by the land. It can be reflected by water. And it can certainly be reflected by the atmosphere and components of the atmosphere, including the clouds or ash that we might find up in the atmosphere. And of course, really, really important for us in biology is that energy is captured by the producers, by the primary producers. We'll just call them the plants right now and they're used for the process of photosynthesis. You are given some percentages in this diagram. Don't worry too much about the percentages. Just realize that yes, a huge proportion is going to be absorbed by the oceans, absorbed by the atmosphere. And in fact, it's a very small percentage that is going to be captured by the primary producers, by the plants. And that's somewhere on the order of a measly one to 2% of the energy entering the biosphere coming from the sun is actually captured by producers through the process of photosynthesis. A little bit of terminology here, albedo. Albedo is referring to some of the things that we just saw on that previous picture. Albedo is simply the ability of a surface to reflect light. I did mention that the opposite of reflection is absorption. Albedo is not absorption, no. Albedo is reflection. The albedo of a surface is influenced by a number of different things, but a couple of the big ones and ones that we will be investigating in the lab is the color of the surface and the texture of a surface. Surfaces that do have a high albedo, what that means is they're going to reflect more light. And again, important that you understand that albedo is referring to reflection. So the higher the albedo, the higher the amount of light that's going to be reflected. The opposite of reflection is absorption. So the more light that is reflected, the less light is going to be absorbed. Surfaces with low albedo are going to reflect less of the light, so they're going to end up absorbing more of the light. And finally, you'll see this in the lab that we do as well. Well, I guess not quite finally. As a general rule, the lighter color the surface is, the higher the albedo is going to be. And only again, if that energy is absorbed, can it be used. So only if it's absorbed by the oceans, can it be used for evaporation. Only if it's absorbed by the atmosphere, can it be used to create the convection currents. Only if it is absorbed by plants, can it be used for the process of photosynthesis.